Hello, niche website builders. No transition, no transition. What's going on? Oh, hang on. It's ready. It's on tap. It's ready to go whenever you are. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Uh, back to the Age Domain Tuesdays. How's things going, Adam? We, uh, we've been away, haven't we? Yes, yes, we were. So uh, I missed the whole week being on holiday. Then we missed last Thursday because we were at the affiliate gathering which up in York, which was the event put on by Carl. And we had speakers like Morton from Passive Income School. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Passive Income School? Yeah, I think that's yeah. right, yeah. Uh, ben, from keyword, ben from Keyword Chef, um, Alex from WP Eagle was there. It was great. Awesome event, to be honest. Really good. Yeah, it was great. It was, we got to meet lots of lots of people that are normally here in the chat. Michael was there. Michael, Michael did. Great to meet you uh, at the affiliate gathering the other day. Passive Income Geek, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, sorry, Morton. So many <laughs> passives and incomes and, yeah. And, and, and to be fair, lots of niche and builders and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, it was great to, yeah, and 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 Bill as well. Did you say Bill? Nope. Oh, no, Bill was, Bill was Bill there? No, Bill wasn't Bill. there, was he? I think unless he, if he was, he didn't say hello, I don't think. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, yeah, it was great. There's lots of people there, lots of people we'd never met in real life, not only we never met Alex from WP Eagle, you know, who joined us on the Niche Lifestyle Show. Uh, uh, yeah, well, a whole bunch of all the speakers, really. We had, we'd never met. We'd never met some of the folk from Azoic and things like that as well. So that's great. It was awesome to meet all of those. And, but not just that. No, we got to meet customers and hopefully future customers because uh, uh, we got speaking to quite a few people there. And it was really nice to, yeah, just be able to do that actually in real life. Yeah. Um, when you spend so much time online with this lifestyle and what we're doing here. So, um, yeah, it's great. Really, really enjoyed it. Long way to York though. It's a bit far. Yes. It's a bit far from most people in the country, I'd say. Yeah. It's a bit... yeah. It was, a long it was local for Carl. So that's all the matter. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine driving. Like I actually, I was excited driving there. Mm. Driving home was a nightmare. Slightly hungover after a long day at the event. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> yeah. 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 We can't complain. We, we had four, four and a half hours and then, we had our colleague Dave who had six, so yeah, yeah it was a bit longer. But anyway, I was. Some people came from th that said, yeah, right. So we had there was people from there was someone who came from Australia. There was people that someone that came from Finland and from a few from the Netherlands. There's a whole bunch of people, right, from different parts of the world. Oh, a, yeah. a bunch from the US, right, as well. Of course, I mean, mm. you know, Ben of course did, and but a whole bunch of other people came from the US as well. So, um, yeah, amazing for a one day show in in New York. Yes. But anyway, nice city, so good to be around. So anyway, who we got here today? We have Chris, yep. Brian, we got Birdie, we got Dave, we got Tim, we've got Eleanor, we've got Bill, Paul Simpson, pumped, Paul Simpson's pumped about Anchor Text, who isn't, uh, and Derek, and I think I don't miss anyone. There you go, Bill's. I was next yeah. to nice to talk to you at the AG. I thought Bill was coming. Better to go and sit down. So I missed the opportunity. Ah, next time, Bill. Um, great, excellent. So, um, today's show, the one that everyone has been waiting for, uh, anchor text and why do we care? And no, seriously, no, seriously though, I mean it is important when we're looking at HMA, So that's why we're covering it. I always want to cover it. it doesn't sound like the the most exciting topic in the world. Though, it's not sexy, is it? We'll, we'll do it. It's not sexy. It's not, it's not <laughs> one of those clickbaity titles for sure. So we'll see how many people we get here. I mean, we've got 26 already. So uh, like watching live, so not too bad. Um, as we always say, like and subscribe if you are new around here. Oh, not that one. Because, uh, yeah, just helps us get, oh, man, I can't even find it. Like and subscribe. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Because the more people get liked and subscribed, the more people will show up to our channel, recall, uh, subscribe to the channel, and we'll turn up on these live streams. And the more people it makes it more interesting, for sure. So, um, as always, if we get enough likes and subscribes, we need 35. We'll do a merch giveaway at the end for a T-shirt, a hat, or a mug. Um, also, whilst I, get, whilst I think about it, um, reminder, our online event is coming up fast, 7th to the 9th of June. Uh, free to register, head over to building.empires.live to sign up there. And uh, we've got lots of great speakers all talking about website investing and making money online. Um, so go check it out 
it's free as I say to register. Excellent. Oh, we have Nirvana watching as well, who uh, who used to be part of the Niche Website Builder team. And thanks for for for, for dropping in, Nirvana. Hope you're doing well. well. That's good. She said. She said, "Yeah, I will sometimes." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, of course you will." Well, okay. She's proving me wrong there. Okay. Um, so onto the yeah, I guess onto anchor text, right? Yeah, well, quick, quick hi to uh, to Chris Benji's dad as well. Chris is in the in the house as well. Oh, he, he is, and he's tomb raiding with he's us on the raiding. side. That's nice. Yes. <laughs> I tell you what, there was a lot of people at the event who kind of bought up two. They bought up two things, right? So they they bought up tomb raiding quite a lot. A lot of people were really excited, like and, and using it, and like and, that. and we don't get that kind of feedback like online very much. So it was great to yeah. talk to people in person who said they enjoyed it. Also. I'm taller than I look. Like everyone says, <laughs> I, we think you're really short. I thought you're you're much taller in real life than you're not. I must have heard that ten times over the course yeah. of the day. And I'm six foot tall. I'm bag on six foot two tall. So if uh, I'm actually a lot taller than I look, and I've been threatening to put the camera down my, my feet and point <laughs> upwards, so it looks like I'm about ten foot tall. So, uh, but yeah, I'm taller than I look. <laughs> okay. All right. Enough of that. On to uh backly oh no hang on that's not that's the right not presentation, him presentation is it that's not him no that's last week's oh <clears throat> hang on a minute I'll technical issues that. as usual very professional that. channel here we run so <laughs> it did that uh give me a second what's it called anchor text right mm -hmm. Here we go. This other one says it says this, it's got the same title. Oh, yeah. I like it there. So I don't know. I'm hoping this is the right one. I was much have to share my screen. Oh, I tell you what. Oh shit! Hang on. What have I done? Hang on. I think that might have been the right one. Hang on. Let's just go. No, that is definitely not the right one. Well, that's, that was that's definitely last week. last week. This one seems to be taking ages to process as well. Yeah, I'm sick. We're, uh, bear with us. We're there. We'll be there. I think I... Hang on. Hold on. We'll both get on the case. Is that the right one? If not... Nope, I'll... it's not. Probably. Okay, I think I've got it now. If not, share my, share my screen. I'm going to work it that way. Hmm. It's because I, I duplicated it and then didn't rename <clears throat> it, I think, and then ended up with Ah, there we go. You've got him. That's it. Is it? There we go. That's it. Okay. Awesome. Oof. Okay. I can tell. <laughs> Derek, we didn't forget to make the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> it, this is not like the kind of, uh, oh my God, I can't find my homework. Ah, oh, I definitely oh, yeah. did. In my, I was in my bag this morning when I left the house. It's just not here now. <laughs> yeah, definitely bluffing. Definitely bluffing. <laughs> okay. So, I, so go, as you know, with these, these shorts that we're doing, like, Go back to basics, but then hopefully it's got some more useful information as we go. So depending on the level you're at, hopefully we cover cover you off. But from the from the beginning, in, from the beginning, then you know what is anchor text? Anchor text is the clickable text uh, in a hyperlink. So I've given an example there of clickable text uh, as as it generally looks on a web page. So what what anchor text often uh, links to other web pages are going to be used also used to download files or initiate other features on the page. For example, you might click on a hyperlink and it might pop up a light box or do something else there kind of on the page. So it can be used for a number of different things. Um, and you know, really, what you know the purpose of anchor text is to really give you an, give your readers an idea of what they what to, what they are to expect when they when they click on that link. So it should be like a pointer, really, like a flag to say. Click this link. This is where you're going to go. This is this is what you can expect when you get out the other side. And it also tells the Google algorithm what your content is about and the topics you're linking to in your copy. Well, so we'll cover off more about that. But that's specifically about okay. That's it's 
it's what for, 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 for specifically what your page is about and what you're linking to and what we'll talk about in a minute is like well what if people are linking to you and what anchor text they've used but this is like gives gives google an idea of what your page is about when you're linking to other stuff uh, as well and often we often when as SEOs we don't think of it that way around we often think of it about incoming quite often not outbound but also google uses outbound anchor text to work out what your page is about <clears throat> So there's a whole bunch of different uh, types of anchor text that we you'll often hear talked about in the SEO world. Uh, so there's exact match. So an exact match is is it's basically an exact keyword match. So if you're looking to rank your page for a specific keyword and you use that explicit specific keyword in the anchor text, that's called exact match. So in the example here, if we had a page about anchor text and we used anchor text uh, as the text, then that's an exact match anchor. Or if you know, if we want, yeah, if we're trying to rank for uh, anchor text, so a partial match would be something more would be has the keyword in, but that's not the entirety of the text. So anchor text basics would be we've got anchor text as <laughs> this is confusing now. We've got anchor text as the anchor text, um, but we're but we've added basics on, so we, we've partially matched the keyword we're trying to rank for there. <clears throat> um, this one you don't hear so often, I, I, I kind of added it in, but like related anchor text. So anchor text using a variation on the keyword target, e.g. You know, maybe we still got our anchor text page, but we can of use what is a hyperlink, hyperlink and hyperlinks and anchor text are very closely aligned. So, um, you know, often we'll use variations of keywords and target, you know, variation of keywords to diversify our anchor text uh, profile. So, uh, yeah, related anchor text I'll put into there. Branded anchor text is something that we, we you probably, if you watch this channel much, you've heard us talk about it every week um, on this show. Um, so niche website builders is an example of a branded anchor. Um, so it's when people are linking, they're linking to the, the brand, the name of the website or the company, uh, rather than specifically what a page is about or a specific keyword or anything like that. Very And similarly, some people would do a similar kind of thing but they'll use the URL as the, as the anchor text rather than uh, the name itself. So that's a naked URL. And then you have kind of generic anchors, anchors which are you know, just generic kick phrases like click here. Um, so there's no, no keyword uh, focus there or anything. It's just a random random word. That, any number of words that we might use click here is quite, quite common, but a bunch of generic keywords um, that don't really associate to the page and then images so when an image is linked to the uh when an image is linked when you put an, a link on an image so somebody clicks on an image and they end up going somewhere then google looks at the alt text to determine what the anchor text is for that page so the alt text is used for the anchor text essentially i didn't know that and if there's no alt text is that what shows up in a uh, as, as as no text then as the anchor yeah text? yeah that's 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 yeah. what happens isn't it because that's yeah you end up seeing no text all the time, quite a, or quite a lot, don't you? Yeah, because some sites you see um, the like the primary anchor text is the no text thing, but when you look at it, it's all like those scraper sites that have scraped images and linked back to it. So it must be yeah. that that they're linking back, with, and there's no alt text in there. Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I mean, oh, using alt text is great anyway for balancing out anchor text. It's something you should should always just try and use um, in any case for a number of different reasons. So anchors and SEO, just a little, kind of a little brief history here. So Google has always used anchors, uh, anchor text to learn what pages are about, allowing them to rank for associated keywords. So Google, similarly last week, we talked about backlink, uh, backlink profiles. So another super catchy topic there last week, the backlink profiles. If you haven't watched it, uh, that was on last week. Uh, Google were the first to use backlinks uh, it for, for determining what, pages are about and that's really what helped them take off above any other search engine because nobody was doing that they were just determining what was on the page um, um, as a way of working out what the page was about but people we well people they started using of uh, like uh, essentially some sort of measure of authority by using backlinks for the number of people that are linking back to them so they started taking into account well how many people are linking to this page oh that must mean it's good therefore we're going to rank it higher than elsewhere whereas other search engines at the time were just using what was on the page but google also also the first to um, use anchor text um, 
um, to not only what we've already spoken about there, uh, not only to determine what the page is about that contains the anchor text, but also the target page. So what the page is, point, is you know, the page is pointing to and what that page is about. So before, before Penguin in 2012, if you could effectively really aggressively use anchor text to manipulate the algorithm. Um, and you could often do this by just using, a, pointing uh, links to a page with the same anchor text and rank for that keyword, even if the page you were linking to was nothing about what you've put in the anchor text. And that's kind of how, kind of it, how, how easy it was to how I guess how how high highly regarded anchor text was at one point in the algorithm and how it had to be kind of kicked because people were just abusing it. So yeah, you could rank for all sorts of stuff just by using the anchor text, even if the page wasn't about it. I mean, I can't believe that was only about ten years ago. It feels like forever ago now, right? But like the yeah. <laughs> thing was like that you could do that kind of stuff then. But yeah, and um, so that's where people would you know aggressively do stuff and they have white text on a white page with links in it and <laughs> stuff like that so like uh, just to yeah yeah anyway those days are gone um so you know when it comes to seo you know you want to use relevant anchors and just avoid over optimization in general you don't want to be using lots and lots of exact match we've we talked about internal linking i think i think we have we have yep. we have at some point and so internal linking you can be you can be much more aggressive because you're linking from one of your own pages to another one of your own pages. But in terms of backlinks, you you want to avo avoid um, exact match anchors and, and using that too much. Um, I mean, it's hard it's hard to put a number on it, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be I'd be looking at around fifty percent as a maximum. I think thirty to fifty percent as for exact match, and then you need to look for variations um, uh, beyond that. And also, it's worth mentioning, you know, when BERT came out, whenever that was, a year or two ago, um, it uses natural language processing. So it doesn't only consider the the uh, the anchor text, but also the surrounding text um, from where that you know that link is. So any that, anything else that's in those adjacent sentences or paragraphs, it will take that into account as well when trying to determine uh, what the page is about that you're pointing to. So why are anchors important for age domains? Well, um, we want to make sure that any age domain we pick up has a, an authentic or natural looking backlink profile. And part of that is that the anchor text looks natural and, and authentic. Um, so we can look at the anchor text and we can determine if the domain you know, it doesn't look authentic and, and, maybe, and maybe has been used for, for spammy purposes. I'll come on to how some of the things for, for, for some of the checks you can do there. But what is worth bearing in mind is something which is a, an immediate kind of obvious thing that we kind of look at when we're looking at anchors is for most sites on the web, well, you know, unless there's exceptional circumstances, pretty much every site on the web you that has backlinks naturally, you would expect the branded anchors and the naked URLs and things like that type to be the by far the most predominant type of anchor text. So that just is just the way it ha how it is and just the way it, it falls most often. So if you're finding that your branded anchors are like way down the page and you've got lots of other stuff above it that looks specifically, if it looks keyword rich <laughs> or, or, um, or or maybe it's just like, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go on to a lot of different, those kind of spammy words or keyword rich, then it's probably being manipulated in some way. So if branded anchors are not dominant, then manipulation may have taken place. Uh, Google can figure out manipulation pretty easy these days. You know, we can do it as well pretty easily in Ahrefs and tools like that. It's pretty obvious to spot. And, you know, more investigation is needed. You know, maybe there's a good reason. Some, occasionally, if, if it's a smallish site and they've had one post that's really taken off and gone viral in some way, potentially they'll, 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 end up above if and if the if there's only a, a handful of branded anchors and they might end up above but generally uh, you won't see that um domains with the manipulate manipulate anchor text should be avoided um we we just don't know how google is now viewing that domain if it's been um manipulated and you know maybe maybe google's flagged that domain and it's not something we kind of we want to try and build a site on knowing that there might be the handbrake might be slightly on now you, you do see guides and stuff for 
how you can fix sites with uh, manipulated anchor text and try and fix that by basically watering that down by getting more more link links by looting it. Yeah. Yeah. So you just just had to build in more links basically and watering it down. Now, yes, yeah, you can do that. Um, personally, like uh, for us, anything that we see is that, that, that is one red flag, as we've mentioned before, for our age domains, we just we just dodge it. We don't want to go through that work to 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 try and fix it. And you know, can we guarantee it's fixable? Maybe not. Maybe yes. Like it's something that you can do yourself if you've got, if you've got that if you've got that issue. But it, for us, for picking up age domains, we just kind of dodge that as a as a thing straight away. Um, in addition. Um, you know what you got to think about is if the if the previous owner was willing to manipulate the anchor text, then that could just be the the tip of the iceberg. Like who knows like what else they've done um, to try and uh, you know game the the game the algorithm. Um, generally, you can kind of pick up other things as well that they may have done, but not always. But you know if they've done that, then who's to say they haven't done something else that you're not finding or spotting? So it's just uh, we'll avoid that. That's had an owner that we're not not interested in. Uh, picking up with picking up from okay so what other things do we need to check when we're reviewing an age domain so in ahrefs if you have ahrefs you can go into the backlink profile anchors report and um you can take a look at the the anchor so has the anchor text been manipulated so for example i'll give you the example there if you're seeing best running shoes and best running shoes has 40 50 exact match anchors then you might you might start to question okay is this is this really genuinely uh you know got this is page generally got 40 or 50 links or is it has it been gained uh, you know and, and what's the spread of links to that to that page maybe it has got several hundred links if it's that good and maybe best running shoes just makes up a small percentage of that then that's probably fine but if it's if it's made up predominantly of uh exact match anchors pointing to that page then that's something that's you're probably going to say okay that's that's a manipulation one thing that we've seen um just seen quite quite a bit recently um is <clears throat> like and I, I generally don't know what the purpose of these sites are they are they're like um scraper sites of wikipedia so if you've managed to get yourself a wikipedia link a backlink on Wik on the actual wikipedia site and usually it's like in the references at the bottom, they link to your site and they might link to you with best running shoes as the anchor text, for example, just, just as the example. Like I've seen sometimes hundreds of these like scraper sites that just scrape Wikipedia content. And then you'll see then that best running shoes is like the top anchor for that page maybe, but it's because you've got one link from Wikipedia and then a hundred of these scraper sites. So it's not always the case that someone's manipulated it. You need to like do a deeper dive because that could happen as well. But so it's, it's not a case of, it's not a, it's, 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 it's a rule of thumb, look at it and then do a deeper dive and see what's actually happened rather than just instantly like bin it off, I think. Yeah, for sure. I think any, any yeah. of these things, I need some investigation. Um, mm. Yeah, we've talked about the scrape sites before a little bit, I think. That's probably something we can pick up on a little bit more at some point. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, best running shoes. Um, I've kind of forgot. I think I was going to make another point on that. I've kind of – I'll, I'll, move, I'll, I'll move on. Um, so, so, yeah, again, like we, we always mention, you know, check for undesirable keywords in the anchor text, um, you know, such as porn or gambling, Viagra, payday loans, that kind of stuff. Um, if – if the site's been, uh, if if that's the kind of stuff that you've got in the anchor text, then um, you know it's, it's likely that the site's been used for purposes beyond the niche that we're going to want, be wanting to go into. And just to be clear, when we're talking about this anchor text, this is the this is the from the backlink profile. So this is this yeah. this is not this is what other, the anchor text that other sites have used to link to our site, um, rather than rather than vice versa. In case that in case that wasn't clear. So if people are linking to our site with Viagra kind of anchor texts or gambling type anchor text, then that's, that's not good news. Um, we want to avoid that kind of stuff. Google's hot on that kind of stuff. Um, we don't want Google to think that our um, site is associated with any of that at all. Unless we're doing a gambler, gambling site, right? <laughs> then, then, then we'll be fine with it. But if we're not, then you probably want to avoid it. Um, yes. And again, you would have heard this kind of a few times. 
you know, want to check for foreign characters, if there's Chinese or Japanese characters, quite often you'll, you'll see pop up or, you know, any language in, in general, then this just suggests some conflict in the history of the domain. And, you know, as we've mentioned a hundred times, like relevance is just key. So if this site used to target a different audience in a different market, regardless of the fact if the domain was, you know, if you translate that text and it's all kind of niche related text, that's fine. But like, I would still say, you know, that, that's got a pitted history. It's, it's been, it's had different things. It's got, it's traffic's probably come from different sources in the past. It's just, it's just that we want it to be clean as possible. Um, so yeah, we want to avoid any kind of foreign characters and things in there. And last but not least, um, you can review uh, the outgoing links anchors report in HRF, which is kind of slightly down the, lower down the page on the menu. Um, and also look for spammy outbound anchor text. So this is anchor text that we've created on our, on our own site or on this domain that's been created on something and pointing to other sites. So if we're then pointing out to other sites with, with keywords like gambling or even just non-niche related um, stuff, it's potentially suggesting that they were selling links or that the site was used as a PBN, um, both of which uh, we want to avoid again being having a site that's kind of got that history so so that would be another thing to look out for and just to you know will be a, an immediate red flag as well if we spotted that yeah yeah awesome anchor text <laughs> we didn't say is there's uh, if you've got any questions throughout doesn't have to be about on the top today's topic. It can be about today's topic. Doesn't have to be about today's topic. But anything to do with age domains or even website investing in general, feel free to put it in the chat. We'll pick it up as we go along the way. Oh, Mo's okay. got a hat. Yes, hats. Mo's pushing for a hoodie, I think. So I've seen, I've seen the email. I use. She's really pushing for a hoodie. So we might have to look again some hoodies. <laughs> Maybe you was going to send over some uh, some pictures as well. Mm. We're, we're, mm. I don't, I don't think we've got, I haven't got any pictures. Send, send, send some, send some shots. Actually, uh, actually, Maeve was on the show, wasn't she, a few weeks back? So, can we take a screenshot? Oh, of so. No, oh, wasn't it no. Maeve? No, oh, someone else. Okay. Used again. Maybe it wasn't Maeve that was going to send over some pictures. It was. Oh, who was it? I've forgotten now. Carly. Anyway. Carly. 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 It was Carly. Yes. That's it. Carly's not here today. I don't think. You can't har harass her for not sending the photos. <laughs> um, okay, so excellent. Uh, okay, I think we've got a question here. Let's see. It's entered a question mark, so I guess we do. What do you think about a travel site that's focused on different continent and links and using it for other continents still kind of relevant? Um, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming you mean like it was a travel site about traveling around Europe and now you want to repurpose it as a travel site traveling around the US, maybe? Is that is that what the question potentially means? I think hmm. I think he's saying um, that if there was back say it say it was uh, had um, Chinese or Japanese or whatever kind of text, but it was all travel related and you wanted to target that market as well for travel around different what, different things in the world. I don't think so. Like I think I'd still avoid it. Um, I think that's what you're saying trying to kind of think of the exact scenario. Let us know, let us know what you mean, Alex. Uh, and we'll come back and try and answer for you. Cool. Okay, so great. Let's... Um, Chris said this as well. So found a great age domain, going back year by year in the archive, revealed it become an adult site at one point and then back to its original niche. Dropped it immediately. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. It's so frustrating. So I know Ellen is on the Ellen is on watching this today, and we were going through um, through our age domain shortlist for the week this morning. And like you, you get to, it feels like sometimes you get so invested. You may have spent fifteen minutes looking at a domain, and then you get to like the last part, and you're like, ah, something wrong. And you feel like I've just spent fifteen minutes now. Everything else looked great, but you've just got to drop it. And this morning, just frustratingly, that was like like 10 domains in a row that happened. And we were just like, what's going on here? We, have we done something wrong making our shortlist? Because every single one there was something wrong with. It's really frustrating sometimes. I always used to look at the trademark last, which is, yeah. and I changed it to like first. Yeah. <laughs> because it's so annoying. It's like you get to the, oh, this is awesome. Well, great. Oh, it's got trademarks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. 
Anchor Text Prezos. If you need them, I'm your man. So it was it was uh, basically so remember what you said first content in Europe and then switch to Australia. So it was a site about traveling in Europe and then want to do a site about traveling in Australia. I guess the I'm question would be really is is why you would want to switch. Maybe I'm assuming you might live in Australia, so you've got more relevant kind of information. Um, it, it might depend. It might depend on kind of like. Was it a general travel site, but they just happened to be traveling around Europe? Or was it a travel site that talked specifically about traveling around Barcelona and what you can do in Barcelona and shops and cafes and places you must see and things like that? If it was that kind of stuff, then it might be a bit weird that you then start talking about places in Australia. Um, you'd at least want to have a look at the the old content, the, the pages that used to rank the best, um, the pages still have the most referring domains to them. Because I'm assuming you, you, you'll probably need to recreate some of those anyway to maintain that backlink profile. So you, you'll you probably at least need, in this case, an element of travel around Europe just to maintain that backlink profile. Um, and it could be that you just have a very small hub on Europe and then you just expand out in, into Australia and, and that might work best then. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. I don't think we've come across something specific like that where it's traveling content and and you want to repurpose it to another one. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it does depend a bit. But if there's if it's got a whole bunch of backlinks which are all related to travel in Europe and you try and switch it, I don't know how yeah. successful that'd be. Um, For sure. Okay. All right. Should we move on to the domains? Yeah, do we should we do the chess one first? Chess first. Cool. So um, yeah, this is the part where we delve into uh, two domains that that are currently in our inventory. Um, and we talk a little bit about kind of like the due diligence, and then I think the part that people are finding interesting is the, the keyword research aspect or the ideas that we would you know how we've what competitors we've looked at and things like that. So we also cover that for, for the next two sites. So this first one is called Chess Area. It's obviously about chess. It's, whoa, was it gone? Good game. <laughs> 18 years old, uh, DR12, uh, 76 referring domains. Um, it's got uh, links from like Chess USA and Chess Maniac and it's a couple more chess related sites. Um, and then interestingly, we found a, a really awesome competitor that would be perfect for tomb raiding so chesspathways.com um and when we have a look at their content it kind of comes back to what chris says here with the tomb raiding content how do you make yours better we struggled initially to think how would we even make content that was the same until we found a solution to what we would do so that, that's interesting um but we'll go we'll go through that in a sec um so i'll just take that off mark or share my screen and we'll uh, we'll go through it don't forget to like and subscribe We've got 27 likes so uh, I need, what is it? Eight more to get for the merch giveaway. Cool. So this is the, uh, this is the domain um, in Ahrefs. So DR12, 77 referring domains, uh, a history of traffic. Uh, and then the site basically went offline in, in 2019. Um, and I'll just show you the site didn't really change too much when it was actually online. So, Back in 2006, this is what it looked like. Um, it looks like a site from 2006, but it talks about kind of opening moves and training programs and chess openings and online lessons and how to improve your chess. And they even had a small forum, which I think they abandoned a little bit later. Um, so it, it basically a, a site about chess. And we fast forward a little bit and I fast forwarded to 2015 because it was redesigned and then it didn't change at all. Um, and basically it, it's, it, it's a website that, teaches people how to play chess. Um, so they have a chess course, uh, they have a 13 month chess course, um, which apparently they took many years of intensive work to put together, but it's basically to, to make you become a great chess player within a year, essentially. It, I think it's an intense course. I don't think it, I don't think the course was for beginners, essentially. Um, and then that's the way it looked in 2016, and then 2019, and, and then it went offline, essentially. Um, so, Nothing much to report back here. There was, you know, no massive redesigns. The site didn't go offline for a long time and come back online or, or anything like that. Um, it was just a very simple website about the chess course that these guys had made. Um, so if we look at the anchor text, because obviously this is very relevant to what we talked about. Uh, the primary anchor text is branded, so chess area. 
and then branded chessarea.com. And this is what we talked about with the no text thing. So this is where um, a website is linked via an image and the image doesn't have any alt text in there. Um, and you typically see this through those scraper sites that pretty much every website has links from these days. There's no escaping them. <laughs> I don't know where they come from. I don't know what their purpose is, but they, they just seem to be everywhere at the moment. And then we've got another branded one. And then we've got learning chess area. Uh, so it, it's all very branded. It's all about chess, chess area, kind of what you would expect uh, to see. And then we go down a little bit and we're down to one referring to me now. So, you know, this is just one website linking back and there's nothing untoward there. It's what you would expect to see from a, a chess website, essentially. And then in the referring domains, so we've got some some decent DR domains at the top. And then if we search for chess, we've got, again, if we were chessclub.org, chessusa.com, chessmania, chess chat, chess pub. Um, so these ones down here are not super authoritative, but they're very relevant. And on our live show last week, we talked about, you know, having a mix of both, having a mix of high authority and niche relevant. And this definitely has niche relevant links from other, other chess websites. Looking back on here, we can see that kind of, 2016 seemed to be like the peak for traffic. So we went back in Ahrefs back to 2016 just to see like, what did that look like? They didn't get a ton of traffic, you know, maybe a, a couple of thousand visitors per month. So was that because, what, why was that? And, and really it's, I think they just had 30 pages basically back then. And they had a page about chess books and they had a page about chess instructions for, for advanced players, uh, strategy, uh, instructions for intermediate players and for beginners. And then interestingly, which is the route that we would probably take it down, they also had some chess opening content as well. So the French defense, and uh, there was a couple more in here as well. Chess openings, the Sicilian defense. So I think mainly they, they, they put this content out because they were trying to get people there and then sell them the course. This, this wasn't like a full on content strategy. They just I felt like they just put this out to get people on the site to buy the course. But this will play nicely into what we want to do with the website in a, in a little bit. And then if we have a look at the organic keywords from the same time, it's it, it just represents what was on the page. We, we do this and we have a look then through from 2016 to the, through to 2019, just kind of spot checking to make sure that there's no keywords in there in case we've missed anything from way back or anything. And it's, it's all to do with chess. So chess books, how to become a chess grandmaster, books on chess, uh, smart chess moves, the kinds of things, keywords that you would expect a chess site to be ranking for, basically. Nice. So this is the competitor that we found, Chess, chess Pathways. Um, and according to Ahrefs, they're getting you know, 177,000 visits per month. We know that's probably half, really, of, of what it actually is, probably 400,000 visits per month. Um, and interestingly, these guys have uh, an online coaching session as well. Um, so you can get, they've got a course, uh, which is like $67, or you can pay for one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is $60 an hour. And when I was doing my research, lots of the chess sites in this space seem to have courses. Um, it seems to be a thing. So like further down the line, once you've got traffic to the website, I think you've got two options really of, of increasing revenue. One is to make your own digital product, your own chess course. Um, or if you didn't have, if you didn't feel like you wanted to go down that route, or you didn't feel like you had someone that could help you create that, I'm sure someone like Chess Pathways would be more than willing to to partner with you, and you could sell their course. The one thing that, I, but I, I think you would have to do this manually. I, I I really struggled to find any like courses like this which seem genuine that are not on like course what's that website like course course Ria? Was, are they the course website, Mark? What is that called now? which just really? sell courses. Yeah, I know. Courses, um, yeah, there's a few of them, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. But th these independent ones, they don't they, they don't seem to advertise any affiliate program. You don't scroll to the bottom and they've got like affiliates or anything. So I think you would probably have to make like a connection, which might be good because if they don't have an affiliate program. You might be able to negotiate like a really good deal if you start sending them traffic. They've already created the course. You might be able to negotiate like 80% of that $67 because it's free money for those. The, 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 not going to get it anyway. So um, I think that's an, an interesting opportunity. Um, and when we look at it in uh, Ahrefs, we can see the site's been around since kind of March, April 2019. So it's about three years old now. So it hasn't, 
you know, it hasn't been around for 15 years or it's not super well embedded. It's been around for about three years. Um, started on a fresh domain, so it was not built on an age domain or anything. So this kind of shows you what you can do with a, a fresh domain in three in about three years in this space. Um, and then when we look at the, the content, they're doing that with just 93 pieces of content, which is really good. Like when you work it out on a content per page basis, to get that kind of content with just with less than 100 pieces of content is is awesome. Um, and when we look that, at it, it doesn't have to be three years at that point, does it? I mean, oh, you could, yeah, you could yeah. do this within a couple of months, basically. Like, like it wouldn't take long to make yeah. 100 pieces of content. Um, well, it depends how long it takes to rank here as well, but yeah, it should be yeah. quicker than three years. <laughs> exactly. Um, and when we look at the kind of content they have, like very politely, they've they've structured the URLs quite nicely for us, so we can see that they've got a chess openings page, and then we can see all the chess opening kind of pages. And then anything that doesn't have um, like the chess opening is another moves page, but it's not an open opening page. So we've got like a, a defense and an attack and a defense and things like that. Um, and when we have a look at these, so I've opened up this Queen's Gambit page. It's not super complicated, like, and there's not a ton of text. So this is about a thousand a thousand words. Um, but when we first looked at this, we were like, oh my God, actually, these images are really important to the piece of content. And like, you obviously can't just save this image and put it on your own website. Like, how would we, how would we make this? But lo and behold, there is a free chessboard image creator where you can literally move your piece, move your pieces on the board and you can highlight. So like D2 to D4. And you can highlight where you want pieces to move. Um, so the problem of, of creating these, which you know, I, I think might put other content creators off. Like initially, this put me straight off. I was like, oh my god, I don't want. I wouldn't. How would I create that? This just sounds like a hassle. But in in actual fact, with a little bit of research, it's actually quite simple to create something like this. And I definitely feel that we could do a better job of formatting the content. It's. I don't think it's laid out very well. There's little not a ton of space between here it just looks like it's hard yeah, I mean, to read. <laughs> yeah i mean look at even that call to action which is their course one it's just red text yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly um and then also there's uh, and you know a big part of our strategy when we do our tomb reading to make the, the content better is faqs like to add faqs at the bottom and this one might be a bad example because queen's gambit is a film but if we if we google facilian defense for example You've got all these questions which you can add in, which you know mm. just gives it that depth a little bit, a, a little bit more yeah, depth than, than the competitor, because they probably haven't covered why it's the best. And is it a, is it an aggressive defense, um, or is it the best defense for black and chess? They they don't have that. They just talk about the moves. So we could definitely make content that's that's better than this. I think uh, yeah. looks better and and, ha and and it is more in depth, basically. Look, look at the bottom there in the footer. Look at the who's done the website as well. It was meant to be. This Anchors, one. Anchors, Anchors Design. Anchors Design. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talking about Anchors today. Cool. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, th th this is our idea for the site. Um, and aside from this, so this, this site only covers essentially like the opening moves and defensive moves and stuff. They've almost completely like forgotten that there's there's physical products in the space. There's like chess boards and you've got like electronic learning devices and stuff. So this isn't the only way you can go or you could do this and then you could expand into to other areas of chess. Like chess is more than just these opening moves and defense moves. There's, there's products and there's other things you can, you can go and, and look at promoting. And really, I, I wonder if there's also the opportunity to just push other people's courses to do course reviews there's there's loads of courses out there for chess like almost every chess website has a course and i imagine if you are looking at purchasing purchasing some of these courses they must have search volume because there's so much there's so many courses out there for chess so you might be able to get away with doing reviewing digital products as well and digital courses awesome yeah that's quite the chess website quite, yeah quite a lot of scope even though it seems quite narrow it's quite a lot of scope for sure yeah Sure. Also, awesome. thanks, thanks to Chris for pointing out that I didn't mention that these we're doing age domain teardowns here, but the two we're doing today, uh, as we do every week, are available on our site to buy. So if you like the look of it, um, and yeah, it's something that interests you, then you can go ahead and pick those up on our site as well. Yes, we're at thirty-six okay. likes, so we're we're already there. Should we just should we just call it a day? Yeah, uh, that's it. No, wrap it up. 
<laughs> Let's do the baseball one too. <laughs> cool. So this one is uh, is Travel Baseball Central, um, and it's five years old. 132 referring domains, uh, lots of kind of sports related uh, referring domains in there, which is which is great. Um, being a sport website, it's a DR10, and this is one of the competitors that we found. So BaseballTrainingWorld.com. It's a DR9. Sam Rush has getting fifty three thousand visits. I managed to find quite a few like low DR sites. Um, and then also I found a really interesting angle. The competitor that I found in that space is a high DR, but it shows you the potential for just thinking outside the box and doing content that other people may not be thinking of doing. Um, so I'll, I'll, if you get rid of this, Mark, I'll share my screen and we'll go through, through that one as well. Cool. So... Same format, this is the uh, the domain in Ahrefs, DR10, 104 referring domains. You can see here where it, it was online. I used to get a decent amount of traffic, to be honest. A uh, couple of thousand, probably in reality, like 10 to 20,000 visitors around this peak here. Um, and then you can see clearly where it went offline and, and obviously didn't come back online until it's, uh, until it's just expired recently. Um, so this is what the site looked like back in the day. And this is one of the downsides where we did our uh, slide stream on way back. Sometimes it doesn't pull out, like doesn't pull out the images or the formatting, but luckily sometimes it does as well. So that's what it looked like in 2016. But really it looked like this. Way back just hadn't captured it correctly. Um, and the website is, is about kind of um, yeah, travel baseball, which being in the UK, we don't really play baseball, but essentially it's when um, uh, people go from playing kind of like local baseball, um, like mini league, and then they start traveling around. They're typically more professional and they start traveling around to tournaments and playing as a team, like a traveling team, essentially. So the website covered things like tournaments. So you could search for where these tournaments are and the different fields and different tryouts for different teams and the different, the actual teams and the coaches. So it's basically everything you could, you'd, you'd want to know about travel baseball. Um, and then, the site pretty much stayed the same in terms of design. I think this is a slightly up updated design, like the logo is still the same, but a different color, et cetera, but covers the same topics. Um, and then way back, didn't really pick these ones out um, until it went offline then basically in, well, 2021, basically. Um, so that was that was the domain. And I've realized now that I've not pulled up any, uh, <laughs> any of the other pages that I needed here. So go on, I'm you go for it. it. Yeah, so, I mean, just going back to the chess one there, Stuart mentioned, yeah, lots of people sort of sell chess training too, yeah, as Adam kind of mentioned, but you can sell the leads. So, yeah, you could you could easily do reviews of chess training courses as well as a thing and then and then you know, sell leads to those courses off the back of that. Um, so, yeah, for sure. Yes. So just change the dates. <clears throat> Cool. So interestingly with this one, even though it's been offline since kind of 2021, there's still it's still indexed and still ranking for some keywords. And if we have a look at what they are, they're all baseball related ones, obviously. Um, so we've got Central Valley Baseball Connection and Youth Baseball Message Boards. Um, so this just goes to show that even though a domain has been offline for some time, like typically it doesn't it doesn't have an impact on on it. Like this one. Just hasn't been online for over a year and Google still is indexed and is still ranking it for some some terms. And this typically, not always, but typically means that when we build on it again, it'll come back to life really quick because it's already there, it's already indexed. You just add in new content to a site that's essentially already indexed at this point. Um, so that's always nice to see when you've got keywords already, already indexed in there. And then when we have a look at the anchor text, this is basically what we talked about earlier, where this, one of these scraper sites basically has picked, a, picked up an image from the old website, and then they've linked back. Um, and then we've got um, branded, and we've got tournaments and teams, and just just things that look natural, essentially, to a, a, a baseball site about travel baseball. Uh, so we like covered tournaments and teams and stuff. And realistically they're all we're all down to kind of like one referring domain here so the fact that this is basically the primary we ignore this this is the primary and then we've got everything else just looks nice and nice and natural and, and what you would want to see from a an anchor text perspective and then when we have a look at the referring domains so we've got um things like jersey watch in there which is which is okay um and then there's some sports sites in here as well um which is nice but realistically it's it's it was about like 
uh, a baseball as a um, it wasn't a content site about baseball. It was more of like a, a site about where you can find tournaments and things like that. So it would never have links from CNN or those editorial type websites anyway, because it just wasn't that type of website. And then when we have a look at the, the top pages back when it was getting the, at the peak of its traffic, a lot of pages, so 1,340 pages, but lots of these, these were actual team pages. So you can see here we've got teams forward slash and then the team ID essentially, and also parks. So parks forward slash 5470, which was, was the ID. So tons and tons of team pages and park pages, which interestingly I'll come on to in a little bit, is going to influence one of the directions that I think we could take the website and cover different parks from a different angle. Um, so yeah, lots of uh, lots of pages there, and then these are the keywords. Uh, and again, it's it's stuff that you would expect to see from a, a baseball website. I feel like I've said that a lot today, but <laughs> I don't know how else to say that this is what you would expect. There's nothing untoward, uh, nothing untoward in there. <laughs> um, so in terms of the competitors, this is one. And if you've watched any of our live streams before, you'll know that I love finding sites that are on the Acobardo theme. This is the Acobardo theme. It's the um, Project 24 basic theme, basically, that everyone from Project 24 uses. And I like finding sites like this that are in our space because typically they, they do a great job with their content. Like the content is always really good. Usually the keyword research is really good too. And if we can find a site like this that is weaker or has roughly the same DR as our website, then it's great. This is great for Tomb Raiding. Like it's it's Tomb Raiding paradise when you find these types of websites. So th this is the this is the the site that we, we showed earlier. So Semrush said kind of fifty to sixty thousand visits. Um, this shows forty thousand, and that site's fairly new. Kind of went on come online like January twenty twenty one. So it's like a year and a half year and a half old. And again, as typical with uh, project 24 sites started on a fresh domain so it's only dr9 not a ton of link building being done um which which gives us i think an unfair opportunity because project 24 preaches not to do link building and we love doing link building and we're able to typically outrank these kinds of websites by doing that and then when we have a look at the pages they have so they've got 172 pieces of content and it's all question and answer based stuff it's the typical stuff you would expect to see from a, a project 24 kind of website, Q&A, lots of research, lots of headings. Um, you can see lots and lots of headings in here. Um, but interestingly, the other thing that they don't put in here, uh, typically, and again, it's what we preach with our Tomb Raider method, are FAQs. Like they cover the topic well, but they, they always forget to put FAQs in. Like this one just has one. Um, so we can make ours better by by looking at what the FAQs are, what the people also ask questions are, and including it, and making a little bit more in depth and a little bit the article just a little bit fuller, essentially. Same thing, same thing here. Um, I also found another competitor which was called BestBaseballReviews.com. I hate domain, <laughs> like it's a proper um, exact match. Yeah, exact match domain. Uh, yeah, just hate the domain. But on the flip side, again, really low DR, 2.3, not a ton of link building. Been around for like a year, pretty much, 12 months. Decent amount of traffic. And then if we have a look at their top pages, only 94 pieces of content. So almost half of what the, the other website has. And again, it's all Q&A stuff, which which we love. It's, it's our bread and butter. But they do have, unlike the Project 24, they do have some best of guides. So they've got best softball gifts, some best t-ball bats. Um, I mean, the site looks, I think it looks horrible, but um, so there's, there's all opportunity in here for affiliate products as well, obviously. I mean, you've got for baseball, balls, bats, gloves, uh, helmets, tons of opportunity for, um, for affiliate programs, but the competitors that we found tend to be doing the best with informational, with a sprinkling of, of commercial content in there. Um, also found this website, so uh, inengage.com, um, DR11, so again, low DR, roughly about the stage as, as some of the other sites we looked at, like a year and a half, maybe two years old coming up. Uh, and if you have a look at the pages, 104 pieces of content, and again, lots, lots of question base. There's there's not a lot of, I don't think there's any commercial pieces in here. So lots of Q&A type content, which which we love doing. We're, I think we're pretty good at creating FAQ type content. Um, Interestingly, we're going to be doing a case study on uh, FAQ slash people also ask slash zero search volume keywords on Thursday, where we'll show you a 
like a case study of a website that we built literally, was it 12 months ago, Mark? Is that what we yeah. said? 12 months ago um, on a fresh domain, uh, front loaded it with content, has not been touched since. And I think it's just starting to come out of that sandbox now. It's doubling month on month. I think last month did 10,000 visits. This month's probably going to do about 15,000. Um, so we'll, we'll run through the full case study on how we got those keywords and stuff next week on, on Thursday. But it's, the, it's this kind of stuff, these kinds of keywords and these kinds of topics. And then finally, um, uh, two things made me think of this website then. So I'll, sh I'll bring it up. It's called um, ballparksofbaseball.com. And as the name suggests, it talks about all of the parks, like the stadiums essentially, where you know, you've got past ballparks and future and NL and AL and things like that. Two things made me think of this. One was there was a site for sale on Motion Invest a couple of months back that covered – uh, NFL stadiums, and they broke it down into two types of articles. So they broke it, the first one down into this is the stadium, this is the these are the directions, this is these are the this is like the seating capacity, etc. And then they also had another article which was about the stadium that talked about food. So can you bring your own food there? Is the food there? Can you bring beer, etc. Uh, and the site was fairly new. I think the, they were selling it too early. It was on a nice Nice upward trajectory, um, but only 30 stadiums and uh, seem to be doing quite well. So when I saw baseball, I thought, well, could we do the same thing with baseball stadiums? And then done a bit of research and found this ballparks of baseball. When we have a look at it, it's definitely a, a high DR. So this is a DR52. Um, it's been around for quite some time. And I think this is where you can see the seasonality, maybe a little bit more of the niche of people that actually go and watch baseball and travel. Um, and you can see where COVID happened and you can see where it's coming back a little bit now. But it's actually been around for a long time. Um, according to this 100,000 visits, according to SEMrush, it's closer to 200,000. So probably half a million visits per month. Um, when we look at the, the piece of content, the room for talking about stadiums is huge. They've basically got almost 500 pieces of content talking about the different ballparks. And if we have a look at it, basically, you know, this is about that. And then we've got some pictures and that's it. There's not a ton. Um, so I spent some time thinking like, how could we make our piece of content better than this? They've got some facts and figures and ticket prices here. I think these are affiliate programs, which is interesting, but looks like, like an embed. They've got a map, um, but that's it. Like there's, they don't talk about a ton about this about this park or the stadium. Um, so I spent some time pulling together this initially. So these are all of the stadiums that I think would be best to cover first. And I've done this based on um, the traffic that's been driven to the to ball, uh, ballpark of, of softball, uh, soft baseball. Sorry. So like these are the pay, these are the stadiums that are driving the most traffic for them. And then I definitely think we would have a, like a facts and figures piece. And um, basically, you know. It, it would be similar to the table they already have. But then I also think we can have all of this that talks about each stadium. So the history of the stadium, who is it, who is it, or what is it named after? When did it open? What teams play there? The location, the capacity, what are the stadium dimensions, seating charts. If you find an image, there's lots of images of stadium seating charts. Interestingly, I didn't even realize this was a thing. You can buy seats at stadiums as well, like your own seat at the stadium. Um, Talk about the best seats there, any notable features, memorabilia. This is important for um, stadiums that have that have uh, that are no longer around. So like historical stadiums, you've got tickets, mascots. Uh, what time do the gates open? And then more so then this is this is what that NFL site was doing. So how much is the parking at X stadium and the best options? Can you get a parking pass? How many parking spots does the parking lot have? Handicap parking? Is there a, does it allow tailgating? Public transport? Foods, classic foods, new foods, desserts. Can you bring your own food, your own drinks, any bars nearby? So like, it's easy to see how creating a piece of content about the same stadium, but including all this additional information, even with a higher DR, like a much higher DR, it's not hard to see that over time with enough kind of topical authority by writing all this, you could outrank them and you could take that traffic from them. And it almost seems to be, you know, hundreds of stadiums that you could do this for um going back to their pages there they've got all these different ballparks and then they've got um yeah more ballparks they've got some direct like pages about directions on how to get to certain places um so yeah that, that was that was my idea on 
one option that you could go with with this domain. You could cover all the ballparks first, or you could cover all the Q and A's first, or you could do a mixture of both, see what's working. Um, but yeah, a little bit different, a little bit kind of outside the box rather than just going after the Q and A kind of kind of stuff. Yeah, awesome. It's a couple of awesome domains there. Lots of scope again. Yeah. So all good. Yeah, thanks for that. That's that was awesome. Um, okay. So, yeah, as I said, um, they're both available on our site, those domains, if there's something uh, that interests you. Um, otherwise, it's uh, merch draw time. If, you want, if you're want, if you interested in getting into the draw for a T-shirt or for a mug or for a hat, then um, type something in the chat now. Anything. Don't have to be anything. It could be hello. But you need to type something in the chat in the next two minutes or so. That's how, that's how YouTube works. You won't get entered in the draw unless you type something into the chat. So go ahead. While you guys are doing that, we'll answer Derek's question. So what do you think of having a news section on the website, pulling live news on the niche? Does it slow down the site and potentially make it lose rank? I don't know is the honest answer. I've done anything with news websites. I know there's certain nuances that you have to do with news websites typically if you want traffic from the news section to get into Google News and get it approved with Google News. And there's all kinds of little bits that you need to be aware of to get it approved with Google News. And I think you've also got to got to think then where's that content coming from? Are you using a plugin to automatically scrape news and put on your website? Does that offer any value? Are you going to build a team that creates the content very quickly for you when news comes out? Like, I don't know. There's it, nothing, it's something I've not explored personally. And, and just because of those, those facts there, I don't know if Mark has got any other kind of take on it, but I, I don't know. It's not for me. I'm just looking at your backlit, backlit moustache you've got at the moment. I know. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I look, I look like Eggman. My son's watching Sonic. It looks like a I look like Eggman, like yeah. Glowing <laughs> moustache. It's awesome. I'm trying um, to get it in my eyes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think, um, I mean, if you're embedding anything, right, like embedding uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that, it's going to be similar, I imagine. Uh, I think um, I think it's fine. There's, there's mitigations that you can do for that. You, you can, you can uh, get stuff like that to load after the rest of the page is loaded and stuff like that if you really wanted to. I think it's just a case of trying it out and seeing how, what effect it has. But yeah, it might slow it down. Um, but so does a lot of things, like I say, like embedding YouTube. So yeah, it, it depends. It depends on what you what you're putting in and what embed you're using. I think. Uh, yes. Test it. Okay, a couple more or well, another minute to uh, get your name in the chat, and then. Uh, oh. Question from Wayne, if you had a domain that, that place in the UK and US, how would you build that when there is lots of traffic for both locations? If it's an age domain, Wayne, then I would probably look at where it was ranking for previously. Um, typically, one is more dominant than the other. Like you wouldn't, typically you wouldn't see like an equal split between US and UK traffic. Um, but pretty much all the sites that we build are focused towards the US because it's the bigger market, it's the bigger opportunity. Like search volume typically is a lot higher for the same kinds of things in the US than it is in the UK. So, you know, I'd probably go go US rather than UK. All right. Are we ready? Are we going to do the draw? Literally yeah. does. I'm trying to get it lined up like perfect. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, cool. Let's put some music Maybe you don't need another hat. You've got about five hats now, maybe. You definitely don't need another one. <laughs> <laughs> is, we, is everybody in there? Oh, I, need to, I need to close the blind because it's actually doing my head in a sec. And it's got these people out. A couple more joined. There we go. Hey. Some music going out. Oh, yeah. Get the music. Bit of chill today. Nice. Okay, let's go. Boom. Nice. Okay, this is uh, for some merch. Nirvana wins it now. Eh? <laughs> Nirvana's already got a nice, nice purple shirt. I'm sure, she wears it. It's oh. gonna be, be Nirvana. <laughs> Mate, this is a fix. Fix. 
Oh, I got this. was Naomi. It seemed like it was going to catch up to Nirvana. I was so close. Well done, Naomi. Well done, Naomi. Head over to the website, hit up the chat or the contact form uh, to claim your merch. If you were, if you were at the uh, the affiliate gathering event, we we took some caps with us, and honestly, we couldn't give them away. We we took way too many than we needed, and at the end, it felt like something from The Apprentice, where me and Eleanor were just trying to give these caps to anybody that would take them because we didn't want to pack them back up and take them home. So, <laughs> floating out there from the affiliate gathering is probably like, I don't know, seventy two mugs and yeah, seventy two mugs. Number of pens. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, they're not as good as as the mugs on the stream, though. So don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got one. Oh, sorry, Stuart. Stuart got one. They're brilliant, Stuart. They're, they're good mugs. Because <laughs> there's, 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 there's two more questions in here, I think. And then, so there is uh, this one. If you guys, hi guys, if you are, are having an old domain with like five links, but one highly relevant, do you suggest they'll go through the acquisition page process, or do you think it's okay to just show them on the site to it? I don't know, Paul. I, I would be highly suspicious if you had a domain with six links and one was really awesome. Like most stage domains we find, which are good, like tend to have, you know, hundreds of links. So uh, I don't know. It would be interesting to hear the story of how you managed to find a, a site with kind of just like six links, maybe. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Mark? 301. I mean, it depends what you pick out for. Mm. But generally, if you if you want, if I mean, you're still not going to get much authority. It depends how good that good link is, I suppose. You're not going to get a lot of authority from it. You probably want to use try and use three hundred one sparingly ish. Like you know, you, you've seen this being pretty aggressive, but we don't want to be doing. We don't really want to be doing thirty or forty into a site. So you probably want to be picky about the ones that you would three hundred one in and make sure it's worth it. If it's that for you, then I, I would argue if it's worth it, even if it's one link. Um, but if you're not planning on doing a lot of a lot of 301ing and that you just like that one. I, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, as Adam says, check it out, but I, I, I don't see any reason it's not going to cause any harm as long as if it's clean. Yeah, fine, do it. Get get one good link if you've paid a decent, a reasonable price for that domain or picked it up somewhere cheap. And then, like, last question of the day Do you agree posting more content fast is the name of the game? What do you say, Mark? I say yes and no. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes definitely definitely yeah yeah the far velocity is good but like the faster you can um post stuff the better obviously the more content you post um the more likely you are to rank for all sorts of different kind of keywords that's just kind of that's natural right um but i what i say is don't neglect don't neglect the old stuff as well. So once stuff's been around for a while, look to improve it. If you've got stuff on the second or third page, if you're ranking for the second, third page, maybe you can look and say it's not all about just just creating content. It's about updating the, uh, make it, making the existing stuff better too. Yeah, awesome. Cool. I think that's it. I think we're, uh, we're out of time for the day. What's, what's coming up this week, Mark? Give us a quick, what's coming up this week? What's coming up this week, we have tomorrow, we have the Niche Lifestyle Show here on the Niche Website Builders channel this week. It rotates between Alex Cooper and WP Eagle and Doug Gunnington's channel, but this week it's right here. It's an hour earlier to the time you're listening to now. So, um, yes, an hour earlier. And that is going to be the art of working remote for, remotely and its pitfalls. So I thought we could talk a little bit about the affiliate gathering as well, because we all come into that and how that was actually kind of shone a light a little bit on you know, we like working online, we like working remotely, but actually shine a light a little bit on, actually it's quite useful to be in person too. And then on Thursday, we have the website investing show, same time here on this channel, um, zero search volume keyword research is that topic. So um, yeah, to join us on, join us tomorrow and join us Thursday for some more, more fun. That's one sound a bit more interesting than the anchor text one, right? But Yeah, case study one would be good, <laughs> the case study one would be good to think. That's true. Zero. Yeah, zero. yeah, that's going to be good. That's that's quite a good one to show you, for yeah. sure. All right. Excellent. Thanks, everybody, for coming, and um, we'll catch you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone.